check good morning right uh, the lesson today is corporate social responsibility so um, I'm asking why uh, corporate social responsibilities it is important under strategic management why we talk about so corporate social responsibility under strategic management why it is important for strategist or corporate strategist so uh, it is it is uh, corporate so when uh, when you heard of the word corporate uh, social responsibility that is we are, as even citizens we have some responsibility towards the society right not as companies not as business people we as citizens we have some responsibility towards the society right under strategic management we talk about the responsibility lies with the corporations lies with the companies business people right so what sort of relationship the these two parties have the company and the society so uh, if you can understand the relationship between the company and the society then you can understand why social responsibility is important for the companies so we all know Uh, currently most of the companies invest huge amount of money on corporate social csr activities right so first of all you should understand what type of relationship is there between these two people then you can understand clearly why companies or business society business businesses responsible for the society so think of what type of relationship is there why companies need to uh, responsible for the society society is outside the company so company is operating with certain group of people companies come by business uh, organization has a certain people uh, type of stakeholders namely if, if i name some of them cuz they have customers without customers they can't run their business they have they have suppliers without the suppliers they can't run the business then without they have employees employees is another type of uh, stakeholders so without the employees they can't run the business so they have the companies have some sort of interest some sort of stake over these parties as like wise the companies have some sort of uh, stake over the society right why the organization is operating in a society so so society has society the the general public or in other words general public society looks at the company's operations they have some interest over the company's operations so general public citizens look at how co corporations operate op op operating right why general public society consists of all of us so customers are there customers are there customers are included in the society suppliers are included in the society even though segregated these customers suppliers uh, government and some other parties we we segregated but all of them all together we call them what we call them society right in the society there are customers there are suppliers there are uh, competitors even in the society all these parties are in the society so society composed of all these parties so then all these taken together uh, we call it society so we have some responsibility towards the society because the company is operating in a social environment so society society looks at how company is operating so society has general public citizens have some interest over the company's operations so then the strategist or the decision makers strategic strategic decision makers 
have to consider the interest of the society because they are decisions influence the society and also the uh, the activities of the society the activities of the society influence the company's operations so they have even though we see there is an indirect relationship between the company and the society sometimes we assume that there is an indirect relationship but uh, in this regarding this con concept in terms of corporate, corporate social responsibility we assume that there is a direct relationship between the company and the society right because the uh, decisions taken by the corporate uh, uh, decisions taken by the companies decisions taken by the corporate executives are influenced to the society right e, so social activities society's activities influence the company operations so then they have uh, uh, continuous direct relationship with these both parties so then social responsibility is an essential element of an essential uh, aspect of corporate decision makers strategist so strategist when they are making strategic management decisions they have to look at the corporate uh, society they have to look at the social responsibilities right that is why social responsibility and ethical behavior is important for corporate decision makers strategic decision makers because it is before making before uh, making corporate decisions before making strategic decisions they have to look at the society they have to look at the society's well being they have to concern about the society because they, uh, these decisions may affect the society before making decisions you have to look at the society because this de these decisions affect the society then they will make certain they will uh, intervene with the company's decision making sometimes they will uh, start certain activities against the so uh, against the uh, company's decisions right so first of all that is why we talk this lesson before starting the uh, strategic decision making process right we after that we will discuss about the decision making um, strategic decision making process before starting the strategic decision making process we should understand what type of relationship is there between the society and the company and what type of responsibilities they are towards the society from the company right so and the other important thing is uh, organizations are open systems if you look at from the systems perspective if you look at from the systems perspective we all agree that companies are organizations are open systems what do you mean by open system what is an open system the systems the uh, a particular a type of system which take inputs from the outside and provide outputs to the outside is it uh, open system there are two types of systems open systems and closed systems closed systems are operating within within the system they have they have not, they do not take uh, inputs from the outside and the, they do not provide they are output to the outside so they are operating as closed systems no interaction from uh, between the outside with the outside right but uh, we agree that companies are open systems that means organizations take out inputs from the outside environment and also the companies produce their products or services to the outside uh, at that aspect organizations are open systems so if organization is open system they need inputs from the outside they need inputs from the outside then our inputs are taken from the environment inputs are taken from the environment 
again outputs are put to the environment. So then they have uh, continuous relationship with the out, outside or outer environment. So then society is the outside, society is the outside, so then we have some responsibility towards the outside outside environment. So then at that point of view, companies, businesses, organizations have some sort of responsibility towards the outside because they take inputs from the outside, input from the society, input from the environment and they put their output to the environment or the outside environment. So they have some relationship. They have some relationship. It is an indirect relationship. So then because of this, this relationship, they have, to con they have to listen at least. They have to at least listen, look at, concern about the interest of the society. So before making strategic decisions, the strategic decision, uh, strategic, uh, decision maker should consider the social concerns. So social responsibility. So, now you know why social responsibility is important for strategic decision makers. What is the relationship with strategic decision makers and social society? They have some stake towards the society. So look at what uh, uh, social responsibility is. We generally uh, call CSR, right? There is a term called social responsibility. There is another term called corporate social responsibility. What is the difference between social responsibility and corporate social responsibility? We all, citizens, we have, we have some social responsibility. It's a general term. But here we talk about corporate social responsibility, that is social responsibility of corporations. That is social responsibility of corporate. That is the resp uh, this responsibility towards the corporate, towards the society by the organization, by the business world, right? So corporate social responsibility is the responsibility of the business people, business society. Understood? So we generally uh, term it as CSR, right? What, uh, what is uh, CSR? Corporate social responsibility proposes that according to corporate social responsibility pro, uh, proposes that a private corporation have uh, sorry not a uh, that private corporations have responsibilities to the society other than making profits for the shareholders. So it is the general uh, meaning. So organizations have responsibility towards the society other than making profits. Why they make profits? They make corporations make profits for the shareholders. They want to satisfy the, that is the main purpose of a company or corporation. They want to satisfy their shareholders. Otherwise, they will not permit them to run the business. If the shareholders are if the shareholders do not satisfy with the company, they, they may decide to shut the company. So first of all, they have to look at the uh, shareholders. So while, while, while satisfying the shareholders, they have to satisfy the society. Right? So these two have no priorities. These two have no priorities either to, uh, uh, neither to uh, profit or the society, right? Two similarly important. Uh, strategic decisions often affect more than just the cooperation. So, uh, strategic decisions, strategic decisions not only affect the cooperation, but also affect the other parties. So then they have to look at the other parties. Corporate decisions. So I have uh, taken all these from the Wheelan and Hungers book. So if you need further uh, references, you better to refer 
Veelanahanga, right? So, all these things are taken from Veelanahanga. Corporate decisions affect not only the firm's workforce, but also the community where the plants are located and the customers with no other source of the this uh, source for the discontinued product. So, so same thing organizational decisions, corporate decisions affect the community. Not only the customers, not only the suppliers, not only the employees, again the society. Such situations raise question of appropriateness of certain mission objectives and strategies of the business corporation. Why? You, when you are making strategic decisions, when you are formulating strategies, when you are planning for strategies, so strategies are planning for competitive advantages, strategies are implement, you plan strategies, you implement strategies for gaining competitive advantages. Why you, get, well, you want to gain competitive advantages? You want, to, you want to satisfy some of the people, you want to satisfy the stakeholders, right? So then your, your decisions, your, all the corporate uh, decisions uh, should be taken in the, uh, for the benefit of these, all these parties. So, such situations raise questions of appropriateness of certain mission objectives and strategies. So, these, our mission, our strategy, our objective should be appropriate for serving these people. Our mission, strategies, objectives should be appropriate for serving these people who are the, these even including the society. So, when you are drafting your mission statement, when you are setting your goals, when you are setting your objectives for your company, then you have to look at the society as well. In your mission statement, you should, you should state something about the society, your concern about the society. Your strategy should be again focused towards the society. Your objectives, your goals should be focused towards the society. So, these things should be appropriate for serving the society as well. Managers must be able to deal with these conflicting interests in an ethical manner to formulate a viable strategic plan. So, then there is a conflict. Why? Whether the uh, stakeholders or to look at the society. When you are investing, when you are highly consider about your society, you are losing your shareholders. If you are highly consider about your maximization of profits, maximizing profit means looking at the shareholders. So, if you consider about your shareholders, if you are uh, for, if you are working for maximization of profits, then you will lose the society. So, because uh, you have to, uh, you have no uh, concern about the society because you are uh, moving towards maximization of profit for the shareholders. So, then there is a conflicting interest whether society or whether to look at shareholders. So, when you are making strategic decisions, the strategic manager should be ethical in looking at both sides, looking balance in these conflicts. So, it uh, uh, conflicting interest in an ethical manner should be ethical. So, looking at both uh, sides in an ethical way, in a fair way. So, responsibilities, uh, responsibilities of a business firm. So, there are two different weaves. So, even earlier, even, uh, even uh, our points earlier, we thought uh, show social responsibility is a waste. Earlier, uh, before 10, 20 years earlier, we also thought social responsibility is waste of uh, money, waste of money because companies do not waste, uh, invest on social concerns, 
if if they are investing on search, social concerns they will forget the uh, shareholders it affect the organizational profit maximization right that was the traditional view so again friedman's traditional view of, about social responsibility is similar to that companies should not uh, look at the society there is another party to look at the society social concerns what is the other party government the government is they are to look at the uh, care about the society they are the government is there so that is the responsibility of the government government should look, look at the society's concern should preserve the society should preserve the environment should uh, look at the uh, minorities should look at these uh, social concerns so government is there it is not the business of the company so that was the traditional view that was the traditional view companies have to companies should uh, do their own business they have to engage their own business they have to maximize their profit they have to satisfy their uh, shareholders then that is their business that is their responsibility they have to look at they have to look after their own uh, scope they have no interaction they have to know concern about the society uh, government will look at the society that is the responsibility of the government right that was the earlier traditional view about social responsibility so friedman's traditional uh, view of social responsibility says primary goal of business is profit maximization that is the primary goal so uh, companies should look at their own operations they have the scope they have no concern about the others they have to look at their own operations and should uh, maximize their profit he argues against the concept of social responsibility he say no such concept called social responsibility there is no such concept called social responsibility uh, social responsibility is lying with the government or some other interested parties there are uh, ngos there are some other uh, groups who are interested in the society's activities that is not the uh, scope of the companies they are uh, the corporations uh concern about the profit maximization they argue against the concept of uh, corporate social responsibility it is according to him it is spending the stakeholders shareholders money so he says it is spending the shareholders money for the general society's interest it is unfair it is unfair because the company spend on some other party instead of the shareholders it is unfair it is uh, unfair from the customer shareholders perspective spending someone else's money on uh, social interest so according to friedman he says it is spending the shareholders money for a for the general uh, society's interest it is unfair by taking the burden of the burden of this social cost the business come becomes less efficient so according to friedman he says you you take you care of the you look after the society it means you you uh, indirectly you take cost of the society you bear the cost of the society so then it leads organizational it affect the organizational efficiency because you invest someone some some uh, one else's interest you spend money on someone else's interest so you taking uh, shareholders money and invest on someone else's interest so it is unfair it harm the organizational efficiency it disturb the organizational efficiency so uh, because of this unwanted investment because of this unwanted investment unnecessary investment organizational the, the prices of the products will be high it will go up it will go up because of this unnecessary investment and also cost increase prices go up it, it affect the customers finally 
it affect the customers right investment in new activities and research will be postponed so then because of the social cost they have to postpone their new activities they have to postpone their uh, research activities new product developments the the companies operations will be the company's performance will be limited it affect the organizational operations because they invest on unwanted places so these results negatively affect for the company these results negatively affect the fund company so that is the view of the friedman so now we say it is a traditional view it is a traditional view even our concerns we also thought like that earlier right it is a waste of money it is it affect the organizational operations it affect the organizational activities it affect the organizational extensions if the organization wish to hope to extend their company it it affect if they are investing on social activities so it affect organizational organization negatively that was the traditional way so then another another perspective by carol carol uh, argue with friedman's view right he come up with he come up with some other uh, framework regarding the social responsibility so uh, according to carol he identified four types of responsibilities of a company four types of uh, responsibilities of a company right uh, carol identified four types of responsibilities of a company right he agree with uh, partially agree with friedman partially agree with friedman he say, he agree that the friedman's argument partially so he agree companies should invest companies should look at their shareholders organizations or companies should maximize their profit for the shareholders from that point of view carol agrees with friedman then uh, uh accepting partially uh, friedman's ideas carol identified four responsibilities first one is economic responsibility it is similar to profit maximization right economic responsibilities from that perspective he agrees with friedman right economic responsibilities means to produce goods and services of value to the society so that the firm can repay the creditors and shareholders in other terms economic satisfy in the economic responsibilities so they should produce uh, products and services that with value that has value they should produce products and services that has value to the society right in terms of a business firm must first make profit that means a company a business firm should first make profits make profits to satisfy the economic responsibilities that is the first concern according to carol companies organizations first maximize their profit by producing value uh, producing products and services with value that is the economic responsibility then the second one legal responsibility it is uh, he looks at another aspect he looks at another aspect organizations have some sort of responsibility towards by adhering legal aspects it is another type of responsibility it is another type of responsibility it is 
the companies have to adhere the legal responsibilities defined, the, defined by the government, laws and regulations. Companies expected to uh, companies are expected to obey these least, uh, laws and regulations. It is another responsibility. The, uh, they have to maximize their profit for the shareholders by producing uh, products and services with, services with value. So they have some re economic responsibility towards their uh, shareholders. And also they have some legal responsibility uh, to obey the uh, laws and regulations defined by the government, another type of responsibility. Then the third type is ethical responsibility that is to follow the generally held beliefs. So there is another, another responsibility called ethical responsibility. So, in organizations, in the society, the organization should be, uh, they should be behave in an ethical way. Even it is uh, similar to us. We, if we are uh, living in a society, if we are living in a group, if we are living with others, in other sense, if we are living with others, we have to behave in an ethical manner. Our behavior should be ethical because we should not harm, we should not be harmful to the others. We should not disturb the others. They are that is our ethical responsibility. We have to we have to have some ethics in interacting with others, in working with others, in living with others. Likewise, Carol says organizations have ethical responsibilities ethical responsibilities. What are the ethical responsibilities? Generally held beliefs about behaviors. Generally held beliefs about behaviors. We generally know how to behave with others, how to talk to others, how to uh, work with others. We generally have some beliefs. We generally have some beliefs. How to work with others, how to talk with others, how to behave with others. In the, for example, say when you are when you are traveling in a bus, when you are traveling in a bus, there is a, there is a generally held beliefs. There are generally held, held held beliefs about our behavior. When you are sitting on a seat, you have to sit without disturbing the others. We have to get to your seat. So these are generally held beliefs about our behaviors. So as such, organizations also have some generally held beliefs about their behaviors. How to behave in the society, how to behave, for example, say when competing with your competitors, you have to be ethical. When you are, when you are, when you are serving your product to the customers, you have to expose, you have to communicate everything to the customers. You should not cheat the customer. So those are generally held beliefs. Those are not written in law. Sometimes these ethics, if uh, uh, once you uh, clarify these ethics and once you pass these ethics, these ethics come as laws. Timely, right? Understood what I am saying? These ethics sometimes comes as uh, taken as laws, regulations, right? So there are some ethics, ethical behaviors, there are some ethical responsibilities lying with the companies, how, uh, how to behave in the society, right? Example. Society generally expect firms to work within the employees, with the employees and the community in planning their layoffs. For example, say, uh, when they planning for layoffs, what is layoffing? You want to talk to me, you want to uh, even uh, at least to answer my questions. 
what do you understand by the word layoff because you are not virtual students you are physical students then you have that freedom you have that chance right mere listening is not uh, active learning so what is layoff layoff it is a type of hrm practice layoffing is uh, reducing the workforce temporarily reducing the workforce temporarily right so organizations sometimes have to plan layoffs when they are operations get contracted sometimes for example say time to time uh, the petroleum corporation uh, have some uh, certain types of uh, they have uh, some sometimes they have no material enough material to uh, operate their day to day operations they have no crude oil to operate uh, they have no crude oil to refine then they have no meti enough material sometimes they some organizations face certain problems with uh, 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 power problems right at that instances the companies think that instead of uh, calling people to come in instead of calling employees to uh, come to the workplace better to temporarily uh, release these uh, employees temporarily it is it is profitable why without having operations without having operations within the company you call people to come you call employees to come to the office to the workplace it make unnecessary cost the, the they are not productive at that period during that period they are not productive they are not uh, doing any type of operations when, even though they are in the organization so then it make unnecessary cost then instead of calling them to calling them to come to the company you the company decide them to uh, decide to release these people temporarily so when you lay lay off your people you have to pay their monthly salary you have to pay their monthly salary you temporarily release these people it is called lay off due to some limitations in their material or processes or some uh, temporary problems the um, uh, organizations decide to uh, lay off their people right so then they have to pay the salary even though you lay off these people but it is it is reasonable because it is um, wise instead of calling them to come into the workplace it makes some unnecessary cost for example say electricity water and space certain problems are there when they come into the workforce without having certain duty right layoffing so some companies society generally expect firms to work with the employees and community in planning for layoffs even though no law may require this right so the uh, the, eff uh, the affected people can get very upset if an organization's management fail to act according to a generally prevailing ethical values so when you are lay offing your people when you are lay offing uh, your people you have to look after these people even though they are not working even though they are not productive so you should they, some uh, you should be look at the uh, employees concerns and also the society what they do when they go for the society how they uh, have their day to day activities you have to look at the company have to look, the companies have to look at have some plans 
So it is the ethical responsibility towards the uh, of the companies. So the difference between ethical and discretionary responsibility, there is another responsibility. Before that, I will uh, tell discretionary responsibility. Discretionary responsibility. That is responsibility for voluntary obligations. Responsibility for voluntary obligations. So that is not ethic, it is not uh, regarded as ethical responsibilities, discretion responsibilities. Society do not expect these things, but ethical responsibilities, society and other people expect ethical responsibilities from the company. Companies should behave in an ethical way. That is, that those things are expected. Those things, ethical responsibilities are expected by the others. So, we expect ethical behaviors of others when traveling in a bus. Right? You should behave in ethical way. Others expect ethical responsibilities from you. Understood? Others expect ethical responsibilities from you. But discretionary responsibilities, others do not expect. Others do not expect discretionary responsibilities. Right? What type of responsibilities can you imagine as discretionary responsibilities? For example, say when you are traveling, traveling in a co traveling in a bus. What type of responsibilities can be taken as discretionary responsibilities? What type of responsibilities can you imagine? So, if you, if you, for example, say if you, uh, if you, uh, there are some damages on seats. So then you try to uh, make some uh, treatments on these damages because you yourself, you yourself have uh, purely voluntarily, you voluntarily make some. Uh, thing for these damages. It is not expected. Those things are not expected. Understood? You take some steps to, uh, you take some voluntary steps to uh, clean the bus, clear the bus. Right? Those things are not expected by you, by the society or by others. But you voluntarily do something improve, you voluntarily do some improvements. You voluntarily do some improvements. They are discretionary responsibilities. Understood the difference between ethical responsibilities and discretionary responsibilities. So, discretionary responsibilities are not expected by the society or by other people. Right? Companies or people voluntarily uh, do this responsibility, discharge these responsibilities. Right? So, example, these are, these are purely philanthropic. Purely philanthropic. Welfare. Right? So, the, some, there are some responsibilities uh, the organizations discharge as voluntary obligations. So, according to Carol, he has identified four types of responsibilities, economic responsibilities, that is maximizing profit regarding the economic aspect of the company and legal responsibilities, obey laws and regulations and then ethical responsibilities uh, that is responsibly, responsible behaviors expected by the others. Responsible behaviors expected by others. And the third one, discretionary responsibilities, purely voluntary obligations. Understood. So then, when you look at these, uh, first two are, First two 
are not taken as social responsibilities. First two, economic responsibilities and legal responsibilities are not considered as social responsibilities because that is their own business. That is their own business for the purpose of running their own business. They have to have, they have to uh, look at the uh, economic responsibilities and legal responsibilities. But the last two are taken as last two are taken as social responsibilities. That is ethical responsibilities and discretionary responsibilities. So they are taken as social responsibilities. So Carol. Basically identified four types of responsibilities. Within these four type, within these four types of responsibilities, he included two social responsibilities. He included some flavor of social responsibilities. Right? That means he identified that uh, the responsibilities for the society is important for the companies. He says. Social aspect, ethical aspect, discretionary aspect is also a responsibility of a company. Right? So, Carol list these four responsibilities in order of priority. So, he says there is an order of these responsibilities according to the priorities. According to the priorities, he arranged some order. So, companies, business firm must first make profit. He says, first thing is to, is the economic responsibility. First of all, organizations must make profit. That is the first responsibility the organizations, the corporations should discharge. Maximize the profit, make the profit to satisfy the economic responsibilities. That is the first one. To continue in the existence, the firms must follow the laws. So, while uh, first make profit, then to ensure their survival, to ensure their existence, they have to obey the law, rules. They have to obey the rules. Otherwise, they can't run their business. If they do not obey the rules, then second, they have to, to continue their existence, to continue their survival. They have to obey the rules. That, must follow, that is, must follow the law. And in, in other words, they have to fulfill the legal responsibilities. They have to discharge the legal responsibilities. To this point, Carol and Friedman are in agreement because Carol also agree with these two and Friedman also saying this. So, from these two points, Carol and Friedman are uh, in agreement. Then, Carol, however, goes that business managers have responsibilities beyond economic and legal. So, Carol added some two other responsibilities in other terms. So, he says other than economic and legal responsibilities, organizations have some other two responsibilities. So, having satisfied the above two basic responsibilities, a firm should look at fulfilling its social responsibilities by discharging ethical responsibilities and discretionary responsibilities. Is it clear to everyone? These two perspectives. Right? So, the, the first, the, the main thing you should keep in your mind, two perspectives are there. Friedman perspective purely, purely about profit maximization. Uh, but Carol says, there is other than profit maximization, some other responsibilities are there to look at the ethics and the so, so, social, ethical responsibilities and the discretion responsibilities. Discretion responsibilities are purely voluntary obligations. Right? So, these two taken together, he says, 
uh, ethical responsibilities and discretion responsibilities are social responsibilities. But he says there is an order. There is an order to follow a company. A company should follow this order. First should look at, first should satisfy the economic responsibility. And then legal responsibility and come to the social responsibility. So social responsibilities therefore includes both ethical and discretionary but not economic and legal responsibilities. A firm can fulfill its ethical responsibilities by taking actions that society tend to value but has not yet put into law. So this ethical, I said you, ethical responsibilities are not put into, the, into law, not enforced by the law. Ethical responsibilities are not enforced by the law. Right? With ethical responsibility, when ethical responsibilities are satisfied, a firm can focus on discretionary responsibilities. Once ethical responsibilities are satisfied, he, the company, look at the ethical concerns. And then once he, once the company satisfy with the ethical concerns, then they can invest on discretionary responsibility, responsible activities. Discretionary responsible activities. Purely voluntary actions that society has not yet decided as important. Society do not expect from the companies, but ethical responsibilities society expect. Society expect not to cheat. Society expect full information. When having a transaction, society expect full information. Not to cheat. So those are ethical responsibilities. But society do not expect something from something for the pollution. But it, it comes as now, nowadays pollution is again comes as ethical. Right? So, some purely voluntary activities, right? And you should uh, remember these things. Uh, when, when, the, when, the, when the society de develops, when the society develops, these uh, discretionary responsibilities are taken as ethical responsibilities. These ethical responsibilities are taken as legal responsibilities once the, so once the society develops. Once the, uh, while society develops, understood what I am saying? While society develops, these discretionary responsibilities are considered as ethical responsibilities. For example, say earlier, we do, the society do not expect uh, remedies for pollution environmental pollution but nowadays it is taken as ethical responsibility earlier it was a discretionary responsibility because it is not so much important earlier because uh, it, it is not a matter for the society those days pollution is not a buzzword earlier so environment is very clean environment is not harmful then it is not a problem for the society. So the society do not uh, bother about the environmental pollution because no such problem is there within the society. But when the society is talking of pollution, when the society is started to talking of pollution, when it becomes a problem, then they talk, they, the society taken it as a ethical responsibility. Ethical responsibility. In here, in Sri Lanka, sometimes uh, in Sri Lanka, that uh, the, the, the minority, majority uh, difference is not uh, highly taken in Sri Lankan culture. But in Western culture, it is highly uh, taken, minority, majority problem. But nowadays in Sri Lanka, again it is taken as a problem then it should it should be it comes as an ethical responsibility 
understood what I am saying. So, while uh, the, the uh, society developing, while society understanding certain problems, certain discretionary uh, responsibilities are treated as ethical responsibilities. Then again, while ethical responsibilities are, when ethical responsibilities are treated as important, then the, these ethical responsibilities are taken as legal responsibilities, right? Then uh, now pollution, some taken as a legal responsibility. Pollution is taken as a more than ethical, but then legal, legal responsibility. So. There is an hierarchical progression. There is an hierarchical progression. Carol suggests that to the extent that business corporations fail to acknowledge discretionary or ethical responsibilities, society through government will act making them legal responsibilities. So, as I said now, sometimes organization do not, if organizations do not look at these ethical and discretionary responsibilities, come, government will look at and make it legal. If the companies do not look at ethical and discretionary responsibilities, the government will make it legal. Then the company cannot uh, forget about these responsibilities. Understood? But if you if you do not, if the companies do not invest pollu pollu something on pollution, if they, they do not regard pollution uh, as a uh, responsibility, then our government will make it legal. And then they have to may do something for the pollution. So, Carol suggests that to the extent that business corporations fail to acknowledge discretionary and ethical responsibilities, if the companies fail to do something as discretionary and ethical responsibilities, government will act and making it legal. Government may do this moreover without regard to an organization's economic responsibilities. Then Government will not look at the economic responsibilities, how much they are earning. The government will not, 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 will not look at. Government will make it legal. So as a result, the organization may have greater difficulty in earning profit. So then, because it make legal, it may it enforce as a law, then organization has to uh, engage. Then. As a result, the organization may have greater difficulty in earning profit than it would have earlier. Earlier, it is not a difficult thing. It, it, those things are voluntary earlier, but now it is legal. Then whether they earn money or not, whether they earn profit or not, they have to discharge. They have to discharge. Then they have to... Uh, as a legal requirement. So, both Friedman and Carol argue they are positions based on the impact on the social responsible, socially responsible actions on form, firms profit. So, uh, both, both the Carol and Friedman uh, the Carol's and Freeman's arguments are on profit. Both are talking of profit. Right? So, Friedman, Friedman says that socially responsible actions hurt the firm's efficiency. That is the Friedman's argument. Socially responsible activities hurt the company's efficiency. But Carol proposes that the lack of social responsibility results in increased government regulations and in, then it affects the company's profitability. Understood how 
both look at how it affects the company's profitability both carol and freeman both look at how social responsibility affect the efficiency or productivity or profitability right but freedman's view is very short he had very shorter view he directly identified that social cost influence the company's efficiency and company's profitability social cost influence negatively on so society on company's efficiency and profitability uh, carol says carol says if company do not invest on social responsibilities if comp if companies do not incur social cost it affect the organization's efficiency it affect the organization's efficiency and these two have two types of weaves friedman says should not invest on society should not invest on should not invest social capital because it hurt the profit maximization carol says you should invest on uh, social capital to maximize the profit why if you do not invest on social capital it will be a requ legal requirement and it hurts the so uh, profit maximization understood so according to friedman uh, social responsibility and profit maximization has negative relationship if social capital goes high profit maximizing goes down these two have negative relationship understood according to carol when you when your social capital goes up your profit maximization is also will go up so according to carol these two have positive relationship these two have positive relationship if you invest on social capital it will not be a legal requirement it will not be a uh, it will not be enforced by the environment by the government then will not harm to your profit maximization simply both talk affect the profit maximization Carol and Friedman both talk how it affect the profit maximization, but in two different ways. He says this affect negatively. Carol says this affect positively. Understood. That is, even I'm talking about it influence the it affect the profit maximization. The affect the the uh, the friedman's view is negative about negative effect and uh, carol's view about positive effect in effect right that is the difference so uh, then uh, uh, there are two waves there are two waves right Friedman traditionally says it is a cost. Carol says it is not a cost. It is uh, it is needed for maximizing profit. So uh, two contradictory views. Then the researchers looked at this point, two points. Researchers looked at these two points. Even today, our students do. Uh, research on the these two extremes whether social responsibility is a cost or a profit maximization strategy whether it is a profit maximization strategy or a cost again two debatable two deb debatable ideas 
So, researchers started on these two ideas. Right? So, these are some of the research highlights about social responsibility and firm performance. The relationship between social responsibility and firm performance. So, researchers started on these two uh, arguments. So, first one, a uh, survey did in 2006 about from uh, business executives across the world by McKinsey. McKinsey is a very for famous company for what? McKinsey is a famous company for what? For surveys. So, it is a multinational company which is doing multinational surveys. International surveys. Right? McKinsey. Experiment surveys. So, McKinsey and company did a survey uh, in uh, 2006 with business executives with business executives and revealed that only 16 percent felt that business should focus solely on providing the highest possible returns to the investors only 16 percent only 16 percent of the business executives says organizations, corporations should uh, for profit maximization activities. While obeying all laws and regulations. Right? Contrasted with 84% of executives, 84% of executives who star, stated that business should generate high returns for investor, investors but balance it with contribution to the public. So, McKinsey looked at the weave about business executives. They looked at the weave, general weave about business executives on these two arguments, whether businesses should focus on profit or profit plus society, profit plus society. So, 84 agrees with focused on profit as well as society. So, majority accept that we, the majority of the business executives accept the view that organizations should focus their operations on profit as well as society. So then another research survey in uh, 2007 of global executives by Economist Intelligence Unit. It is another research company, Economic Intelligence, found that percentage of companies giving either high or low priority then they looked at what they what the companies what the company priorities the company priorities high and very high priority to cooperate social responsibility the companies give high priority for the social responsibility so so that that is 40% uh, from uh, had risen risen from less than 40% in 2004 to over to 50%. Uh, right? In 2007, that was expected to increase almost 70% in 2010. So. That is again uh, implied that the interest towards social responsibility, the interest towards social responsibility. Earlier, 
they only look at social responsibility. It has increased up to 50 percent. There is an increase in trend about the social responsibility concerns. There is an increase in trend. Earlier we had 40 percent in 2004. Only 2004 only 40 percent is there who are concerning about social responsibility. But in, the, in 2010, it has increased up to 50 percent. There is an increase in trend towards social responsibility by the companies, corporations. So, it was expected by 2010, 70 percent. If you do this 2017, maybe sometimes 90, 95 percent. So the interest about social responsibilities is has increasing trend, has an increasing trend. So you are also your research also can be you can also carry out your own research surveys. What is the, the interest towards social responsibility by the corporation? Another one, empirical research now indicates that socially responsible actions may have positive effect on firm performance. Now, basically assume that social responsibility affect the firm performance. Social responsibility activities affect the firm performance positively. These research have uh, this research ha have proved that although a number of studies in past have found no significant relationship. Earlier number of uh, studies uh, found that there is no significant relationship between social activities social responsible activities and firm performance. But now increase in numbers, number are finding a small or but positive relationship. Some, now we are finding that there is some relationship, there is some impact, there is a positive relationship between social responsibility and firm performance. A recent in-depth analysis by Margoyles with 127 studies found that there is a positive association and very little evidence of negative association. If you go through research, if you go through research about uh, done on relationship between firm performance and social responsibilities very little evidence is there about negative association, very little evidence. So most studies have positive association between firm performance and social responsibilities. Another meta-analysis of 52 studies, what is a meta-analysis? Meta-analysis. So those are uh, those analysis are meta-analysis are the analysis with so research findings. With so many research findings, you can do an analysis. You do an analysis with many research findings, and you can come uh, come with another finding. So, you compare many research findings and you can, you come up with a finding that these, majority of these research says this, right? So, another meta-analysis of 52 studies on social responsibility and firm performance reached this same conclusion. 
what is the conclusion they say uh, social responsibility and performance have positive impact positive relationship so most of the researchers says that social responsibility positively affect the firm performance most of the research finally says that social responsibility positively affect the firm performance so according to porter and krama porter and krama social and economic goals are not inherently conflicting so they say social and economic goals are inher not inherently conflicting so these two goals are not conflicting goals but friedman says what according to friedman he says these are conflicting when you are investing on society you lose your shareholders you lose your profit maximization so friedman identified these are two conflicting goals but currently nowadays we realize that these two are not conflicting goals social and economic goals are not inherently conflicting but integrally connected these are highly connected so it is again that disproving the friedman perspective and proving the carroll's perspective the researchers now prove in the carroll's perspective carroll says they are connected being known as a socially responsible firm may provide a company with social capital so it is providing social capital the goodwill of key shareholders so if you incur on social capital it will be a, it will increasing your own goodwill it is increasing the company's goodwill when you are investing on social capital understood so for example say a company highly invest on uh, reforestation highly investing on reforesting it improves the company's image goodwill it improves the company's goodwill that can use for competitive advantages so it is a competitive strategy that goodwill can be used for competitive advantages it is an asset now you know when you are keeping accounting you treat goodwill as an asset intellectual uh, it is a, it is a uh, what is called uh, intangible asset intangible asset so when you are investing on so social capital when you are incurring social capital you are improving your assets you are improving your assets right that is favorable for competitive advantages that is favorable for competitive advantage now the thinking is like that now the researchers are coming uh, finding that social responsibility is a competitive strategy it is it is taken as a strategy now not a benevolent activity not a philanthropic activity not a welfare activity but a competitive strategy but a competitive strategy csr tries to attract socially concerned younger consumers who are the younger consumers consumers who are at the age of 
make say 16 to 24? No. Right? Younger consumers means the, cons the later consumers. The later consumers. Right? Who have started uh, working with uh, purchasing that, predict that particular product. Who have used to uh, start, who have started to purchase the particular product. The younger consumers. Right? We are younger consumers for uh, smartphones. We just started to purchase smartphones. So, we are younger consumers for these smartphones in that sense, right? So, CSR tries to attract socially concerned younger consumers by offering brands, different brands from companies that it can boost ethical track records. So, then you can boost the ethical track records by uh, concerning these younger consumers because they, they are the people, the, these younger consumers are the, uh, is the segment that are very strong. They are approaching your product. They are the customers, they are approaching your product. They, 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 if you lose these people, if you lose these people, you will be losing many uh, potential customers. Right? So then can boost ethical track records and community involvements. If you attract these people, you can have, you can have very uh, powerful segment of uh, companies, segment of customers. So, in 2004, a study that the marketing firm conducted by the strategic marketing firm called Cohn Incorporation, 8 in 10, 8 out of 10 Americans said that, 8 out of 10 Americans said that corporate support of social causes helps earning their loyalty. So, customers are loyal to the companies. Customers are lo loyal to the companies if they discharge their social responsibilities. In other terms, if the companies support social issues, it boosts the customer loyalty. So, in other, other profit maximization, you can have loyal customers if you invest on social capital. So, social responsibilities again improves, enlarge your customer base, enlarge your customer market, market segment in other terms, loyalty, customer loyalty, enlarge the customers and customer loyalty. It was a 25 percent increase since 1997. So, then you can Witness that many researchers found it, it improves the customers' profitability, corporations' profitability, customers' loyalty, customers, the customer base, and many more positive results for the company, for the corporation. So, being socially responsible does provide a firm more positive overall reputation. Again, the company's reputation also improves. A survey of more than 700 global companies by a conference board reported that 60% of the managers state that citizenship activities had led to what citizenship activities are social activities, citizenship activities, social activities led to goodwill that opened doors for local communities and enhanced reputation with customers. So, 
again that research also says out of 700 global companies the major companies global companies are major companies operated internationally so they also agrees that 60% uh, of managers says that citizenship activities so in other terms social activities improves the goodwill and reputation another survey of 140 US firms revealed that being more socially responsible regarding environmental sustainability resulted not only in competitive advantages but also in cost savings you can save your cost other than uh, competitive advantages you can save your cost if you engage in social responsibility activities for example companies that take the lead in being environment friendly such as by using recycled materials prevent attack from environmental groups and enhance their corporate image so the 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 environmental groups environmentalists attack if you harm the environment if you use polluting there will be more attack you have to face more attacks from the environmentalist if you pollute the environment if you save the environment if you are uh, doing for the favor of environmental uh, conser con conservation then you will not have that attack from the environmentalist so it finally build your reputation it finally build the reputation of the company so looking at these most of these research studies you can conclude that social responsibility gives the companies positive results competitive advantages reputation cost savings profit maximization and build image building uh, loyal customers and so on so there are that means there are advantages there are advantages of social response socially responsibility social responsible activities these are some of the advantages of socially responsible activities so you can enable to charge premium prices and gain brand loyalty so you can sometimes charge premium prices you can because why for example say think of odell right so they have some higher prices but people with the uh, conscious that that company is doing something doing many more things for the society that premium price will not harm the brand loyalty if you even though you can have some premium prices for your product it doesn't harm the brand loyalty because you are doing some you are doing many more things for the society you can charge premium prices even understood you can even charge premium prices it doesn't harm the brand loyalty Uh, the the price concerns price concerns so because you are doing many more things to the society so customers do not take it as higher prices we do not think it as a higher price because you are doing many more things to the society so with that conscious you can even charge premium prices and 
uh, gain brand loyalty. Trustworthiness may help them generate enduring relationship with suppliers and uh, distributors. Right? Then attract outside the employees who prefer working for a responsible firm. So the the, 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 the general public, the society treat you as a responsible firm. Even the government and outside competitors, everyone looks you as a responsible firm. You are incurring the social responsibilities. You are a responsible firm. Then you can attract people, good human, you, uh, excellent human capital. Because of these social, socially responsible activities. And they are more likely to be welcomed into the foreign country. You can uh, welcome to, into foreign countries. And also they can utilize the goodwill of public officials for support of difficult times. When you, when you face uh, certain difficult times, you can get the support of the government as well. For example, say you are you are you are a good uh, your company is a um, good player in social activities. Even though you becomes you have to face certain difficulties, difficult times. So maybe you are incurring losses. Then you can get the support of the government even because. You are a good player at social activity. You were a good player at social activities those days. Then you can get the support of government. They are more likely to attract capital infusion from investors who weave reputable, reputable companies as desirable long-term investments. So even you can attract capital you can attract capital even because you are a responsible company. You, uh, the investment will not be a problem because you, your company is a responsible company. So you can even attract more capital. So those are some of the advantages and these things have been proved by different surveys and research. So now it is taken as, it is treated as a business strategy, a business strategy because it directly affects the company performance, corporate performance, firm performance, right? So then there is a term called sustainability. You heard of the word term called sustainability. It is another word going together. Sustainability, corporate social responsibility, these terms go together. So sustainability, uh, when you uh, hear this term sustainability, you will think of that is concerned about environment. Sustainability is concerning about environment but it is more than the environmental concerns sustainable harvesting sustainable food security security so sustainability so it is more than environmental concern so it is more than just ecological concerns and natural environment so you basically think if the natural environment, uh, if you take some steps to sustain the natural environment, your survival is ensured because we need few natural environment, to for, we need natural environment for our survival. Our survival, our sustainability depends on natural environment. That was what we thought of. 
if you secure the natural environment and ecological environment our sustainability secured right but it is the, our sustainability is not limited to natural environment you not limited right it is not limited only to the natural environment you have to secure the you have to conserve the natural environment while securing social aspects as well it is more than natural environment right so in order for business cooperation to be sustainable in order for business operations to be sustainable that is to a successful over a longer period it must satisfy all of its economic legal and discretionary ethical and discretionary all these responsibilities in that sense i am not devaluing the concerns about natural environment you have to keep this thing in your mind very clearly right keep this thing in your mind it is not devaluing the natural environment on looking at only the natural environment is not enough you have to look at legal aspects you have to look at look at ethics you have to look at discretionary responsibilities for your sustainability understood what i am saying do you agree we have it is it is a must securing the conserving the natural environment is a must while discharging other responsibility ethical uh, discretionary uh, legal and other things understood crane and matern point out that the concept of sustainability can be broadened to include economic and social aspects as well as environmental concerns so sustainability should be broadened towards other aspects as well so your sustainability is ensured if you preserve the natural environment and if you discharge your ethical discretionary legal and economic responsibilities then the sustainability lies with all of these parameters right so then in that sense you can understand sustainability the relationship between sustainability and social responsibility so that is why we uh, take these two terms together sustainability is what is the relationship between sustainability and social responsibility can you think of the relationship between sustainability and social responsibility how do you understand the relationship between sustainability and corporate social responsibility sustainability is ensured once you fulfill the corporate social responsibility activities including corporate social responsibility activities including economic and legal economic and legal understood your sustainability is ensured if you fulfill all of these responsibilities not to operate social responsibilities you have to fulfill the legal and economic responsibilities to ensure your sustainability to ensure your sustainability right so who are the corporate stakeholders corporate stakeholders <coughs> so 
socially responsible the stakeholders corporate stakeholders means the to whom the company is socially responsible to whom the company is socially responsible right the corporation's task environment include large number of interested parties so if you look at the if you analyze the environment if you analyze the environment you will see there are a large amount of interested groups interested parties so about the organizational activities interested about organizational activities not on not other activities right interested about organizational activities so these groups are referred as stakeholders they have the interest because they are interested in organizational activities they have some stake so these groups are known as stakeholders because that that part is very important that that two terms are very important because they affect and they are affected because they affect and they are affected by the company's object uh, decisions or company's achievement of company's objectives if the company do not affect the do not achieve the company's objectives these people are affected these stakeholders are affected if the company do not achieve their objectives and also these people affect the achievement of company's objectives these groups affect the achievement of company's objectives for example say distributors suppliers customers employees affect the company's achievement of objectives if they do not purchase if they do not supply if they do not distribute the products if they do not uh, promptly supply the supplies the achievement of objectives will be in a question again companies achievements companies achievement of objectives affect them how if the company make incur concurrent continuous losses they will not getting money they are business they they can't have good relation business relationships they have to go another go with another they have to turn back in other terms so then there is a both way relationship both way affect they affect and they are affected right so stakeholders have two way affection these groups are referred as stakeholders then they are affected then they affect the achievement of company's performance objectives so should a corporation be responsible only to some of these groups so does a business have an ethical responsibility to all of them a question whether a company should look at some of these groups or whether a company should consider all of them so what is your answer so the company should look at all these parties similarly all these parties at similar uh, at similar level o should look at some of them and should forget about some so the managers decision makers companies face this problem they have plenty of stakeholders they have plenty of stakeholders whether to satisfy all these stakeholders or whether to satisfy some of them 
So then for that problem, for that for answer in this type of problem, you have to have some analysis. You have to do some analysis. Which part has severe impact? Which part has greater impact, influence? And which has lesser influence? To identify this, the company do a stakeholder analysis. For that purpose, you have to do a stakeholder analysis to identify the level of influence. Then only you can prioritize these groups as an order based on the degree of influence. For that purpose, what the companies do is Stakeholder analysis. Stakeholder analysis. So, the company's decision may affect each party differently. You know, the decisions, the company's decisions affect each of these parties differently. Sometimes, some of the parties have very less influence. Right? Customers are the, uh, the group that will heavily uh, have greater influence over the company's operations. Some parties have very fewer influence. So, the company's decisions may affect differently to these people, to these groups. And there will be that because of this, the managers may have some conflict in their when making some strategic decisions which part should be considered more, which part should be considered uh, lesser. Right? So it is a conflict, it is some dilemma the managers uh, have when they are making a decision which part is influenced lesser and which party is influenced higher. It is a conflict that the managers have. Which group's interest should be, should have priority. Then you have to have priority. You have to prioritize the interest. So, what you do is, in order to answer the question, in order to answer the question, the corporation may need to craft an enterprise strategy. It is the strategy. It is called stakeholder analysis. An overreaching strategy that explicitly articulates the firm's ethical relationships with stakeholders. What type of relationship they have. This require not only the management clearly state that firm's key ethical values but also that is understand the firm's social concern and undertake stakeholder analysis to identify the concerns and abilities of stake, each stakeholder. So, what are the concerns of each stakeholder? To identify that, the, in the, the uh, companies do craft an enterprise strategy called stakeholder analysis. Do you need a break? Oh, continue. What is your idea? Continue. Right. So, how do you do a stakeholder analysis? What is stakeholder analysis? Right. Stakeholder analysis is the Identification and evaluation of corporate stakeholders. Right? Stake through the stakeholder analysis, you identify your corporate stakeholders and evaluate their concerns. You identify your stakeholders and you evaluate how they concern, how they influence the impact of their activities. So that is what you do under stakeholder analysis. Step 1.
step 1 identify priors primary stakeholders identify the primary stakeholders so there are plenty of actors around you as stakeholders so out of them you have to identify the primary stakeholders for your organization's operations primary stakeholders those who have direct connection so the primary stakeholders have direct connections how you identify the primary stakeholders is looking at the direct connection looking at the link with the with the corporation what type of link they have whether they if they have direct connection then they are the primary stakeholders so the primary stakeholders who have a direct connection with the corporation and who have sufficient bargaining power so primary stakeholders have sufficient bargaining power they have strong bargaining power for example say customers they have direct connection if they stop purchasing your product you are in a problem they have a bargaining power they have a bargaining power so see these primary stakeholders have bargaining power direct connection to directly affect the corporate activities primary stakeholders are directly affect the corporation corporate activities usually include customers employees if the employees stop they are working direct connection direct connection and high bargaining power strong bargaining power suppliers shareholders and creditors usually they are primary taken as primary shareholders uh, stakeholders in the normal course of business affairs the relationship between firm and each of its primary stakeholders is regulated by a written or verbal agreement that is another way you can identify your primary stakeholders there is a some form of maybe a verbal or written agreement verbal or written agreement with these primary stakeholders right and law once problem is identified negotiation take place based on a cost and benefit of each party so then that that party you can start discussions based on this agreement so primary stakeholders are the uh, groups that have direct influence that has direct connection and also sufficient bargaining power and have some formal law in form written law in uh, verbal agreement with the company that is how you can identify your primary stakeholders second step is second step under uh, stakeholder analysis is to identify the secondary stakeholders so those who have only an indirect stake indirect stake in the corporation but who are also affected by the corporation's activities they have no direct connection but indirect connection they usually include non governmental organizations non governmental organizations local communities trade associations competitors and government usually yeah because the corporation's relationship with each of these stakeholders is usually not covered by any written or verbal agreement 
there is room for misunderstanding so then since there is no written or verbal agreement there will be some misagreements with misunderstanding between these uh, secondary stakeholders what they expect is questionable in other terms what they expect from the from the cooperation is questionable it is the there is a, there is no written or verbal agreement between these secondary stakeholders so how they are acting what how the way they should act the way the cooperation should act is sometimes vague not defined for example say uh, uh, communities local communities or ngos or trade organizations if you do not if the company has no agreement with these how they affect this cannot be predicted how they affect how those how they react how they act on organizational activities is questionable for the safe side organizations what do organizations do uh, most of the organizations uh, have come into agreement with these parties come into agreement with these parties then they are predict they there is a, Uh, they are is they can predict their behavior how they behave again how they whether the against the whether they against with the company's operations whether they against with the company's decisions or not can be predicted if you come into an agreement if you have if you don't have an agreement with other parties we can't predict how they behave Uh, for our decisions how they behave for our decisions cannot be predicted so if you don't have certain agreements with some of a party in the external environment are treated as secondary stakeholders it is very difficult to predict their behavior for the company's operations understood so here we usually taken non governmental organizations local communities trade organizations as secondary stakeholders but companies can treat these parties as primary stakeholders by coming into an agreement that is what i wanted to say you if you can come into an agreements with these parties these parties are treat can be treated as primary stakeholders so then they have direct contacts they are they are directly connected then the behaviors activities can be predicted because there is an agreement if you if for example say Uh, uh bus regarding the bus fare regarding the bus fare so if you increase bus fare by 10 rupees you there is an agreement with the uh, passengers so, uh, there is a uh, association call bus i can't remember the term the name there is an association of uh, passengers and also there is an association of bus owners right if the if if the private uh, bus owners want to increase the fare they have to consult there is an agreement with the bus passengers association they have to get the consent they had to put put for proposal they have some agreement so then the passengers association is a primary stakeholder with regard to the uh, that 
decision because they have a agreement they have an agreement so if you then their behavior can be predicted because there is an agreement if you increase by 10 rupees we will do such thing we, we there is an agreement so they have bargaining power that is why they come into uh, actions they have higher bargaining power if they have agreement understood what i am saying so sometimes some of these groups can be primary in case of certain business activities if i generally put trade associations competitors and government as secondary because the corporations relationship with each of these stakeholders is usually not covered by any written or verbal agreement there is a room for misagree mis misunderstanding as the case of ngo and activities they are act, act they they are actually may be no relationship until a problem develops they do not act they they do not act against the company if problem develops usually brought up by the stakeholders but if there is a problem the other parties will raise but ngos there is no agreement they will silent if any business decision business decision is taken they will silent there is no connection but they there is a room for their actions because they are secondary stakeholders understood that is how you understand the secondary stakeholders in the normal course of events these stakeholders do not affect the corporation stability so these secondary stakeholders do not affect any of the business decisions unless there is a problem but primary stakeholders have uh, affect the influences they affect and also they are affected aside from competitors the secondary stakeholders are not usually monitored by the corporation in any systematic fashion and again organizations do not monitor the secondary stakeholders behaviors there is no regular way of monitoring how they are behaving because they are they have indirect influence they have indirect connection but if they are primary stakeholders the companies have formal way of monitoring their behavior formal way of monitoring their behavior but in the case of secondary stakeholders other than competitors there is no formal way of monitoring the behavior of the secondary stakeholders they work separately both secondary stakeholders and the company work separately mutually uh, independent way but they have some ability of influencing to the company although these stakeholders may not directly affect the firm's short term short term profitability their actions could determine the corporation's reputation and long term performance so short term very few very low effect influence but long term there will be uh, big uh, considerable amount of influence long term the third step under the uh, stakeholder analysis to estimate the effect on each stakeholder group for from any particular uh, strategic decision so the third step is to evaluate the effect third step is to 
evaluate the effect. You have to evaluate the impact of each of these stakeholders. Because the primary decision criteria are typically economic. The first one is, the first criteria you look at is economic impact. When you uh, evaluate in the impact, first one you regard the economic impact. In evaluating the influence of each of these stakeholders, the primary criteria is the economic impact. How these um, stakeholders affect our company from economic perspectives, from the economic perspectives. This is the point where secondary stakeholders may be ignored or discounted as unimportant. So the primary, primary stakeholders have the high priority. When you analyze in the stakeholders, so the primary stakeholders will come at top because primary stakeholders look at the economic aspects, the impact from the economic perspective, they are at the top. Customers, employees, uh, the, the suppliers, distributors, the companies, economic aspects. So then the primary stakeholders, when you analyze the stakeholders, primary stakeholders are given higher priority from the, because the, our uh, primary concern is economic impact. Understood? That is the prime criteria we look at in evaluating the stakeholders. That is the most, uh, the prime criteria. So then primary stakeholders will be treated as uh, prioritized groups. And secondary stakeholders may be ignored or sometimes discounted because they have no economic interest. They have very less economic interest. The stake, uh, secondary stakeholders need not share uh, dividends, shares. They have no interest on economic things. Economic factors are the considered of the primary stakeholders. For, ex, uh, for a firm to fulfill its ethical and discretionary responsibilities, it must seriously consider the needs and wants of the secondary stakeholders. So the secondary stakeholders look at what? So the secondary stakeholders look at discretionary and ethical responsibilities. Not the economic responsibilities, but the discretionary and ethical responsibilities. For example, how much will specific stakeholder group lose or gain? Right. What are the alternatives do they have to replace what, they, what may be lost? So that is how you do the analysis. That is how you do the analysis. So each stakeholder group is taken and basically you first look at the primary stakeholders because the prime criteria is economic measure and they come at the top and secondary stakeholders only have discretionary and ethical responsibilities. So you have to look at how much each stakeholder is lose and gain. And likewise, you should look at each stakeholder groups and analyze their impact. For that purpose, in analyzing the stakeholders, you need stakeholders' inputs. You have to have stakeholders' inputs. So most of the companies, most of the companies uh, have discussions with the stakeholders. That is how do, otherwise how do you identify their interest? 
how do you quantify how do you quantify the interest of uh, uh, secondary stakeholders you can quantify the interest of the uh, primary stakeholders because uh, you know the the volume of the sales by the customers you can quantify how much with uh, how much you lose if you if you are if your customer base decrease by 50% you will lose your volume of sales by 50% so the if you stop uh, day to day operations by 15% the suppliers 15% of the suppliers supplies will be affected understood so the the primary uh, uh, stakeholder activities can be quantified because you can you have measures operational measures connected with primary of the primary stakeholders activities customers can be the influence of the customers can be quantified by volume of sales the influence of the distributors can be uh, quantified by the volume of distribution the influence of the 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 supplies can be quantified by volume of supplies understood each of these primary stakeholders have direct connections with the company operations by quantifying company operations you can quantify the primary stakeholders uh, influence impact because there is a direct connection understood but with regard to the secondary stakeholders you can't quantify the impact you can't quantify the impact with regard to the secondary how they influence your company your company how your company influence they, them cannot be quantified understood what i am saying so then for that purpose what you can uh, do you can get inputs from these parties you can come they ask them to come to and come to discussions and ask if we do this if we take this decision how do you treat it how it affect your you how do you act against that you can have discussions and inputs understood so once stakeholder impacts have been identified managers should decide whether stakeholder input should be invited into the discussion of strategic alternatives when you are uh, taking strategies you can have the impact of the stakeholders further through discussions a group is more likely to accept or even help to implement the decisions sometimes these people accept and help the decisions if it has some input into the alternative is chosen and how it is to be implemented then you have to consider their inputs and put these inputs to your alternative decisions so given the wide range of interest and concerns present in any organization task environment one or more groups at one any at any one time probably will be dissatisfied so or even though you come you uh, ask discussions you take their ideas you take their inputs into your alternatives alternative decisions there will be at least one party who is dissatisfied with your decision you can't fulfill all of the stakeholders interest in other terms in other terms that means you can't fully satisfy all of your stakeholders at at least at one time some people may disagree dissatisfy with the organization's activities even if management is trying to be 
socially responsible. So, so there is another kind of problem. We, throughout this lesson, we said, I said to you, social responsibility has many more advantages and positives. Sometimes you will find at least one party, at least one party at one time, sometimes will disagree with your activities, even though you are so much of socially responsible. Even though you are so much of socially responsible, at least one party at one time will disagree with your activities. Right? The company may have some stakeholders of which it is more only marginally aware. Some, some, uh, some have very less awareness about your activities. So then they will raise some negative activities. They don't know your activities, marginally aware of your activities. Sometimes they may raise some negative activities over your decisions. Right? So, then, therefore, before making a strategic decision, before making a strategic decision, strategic managers should consider how each alternative strategic decision will affect various stakeholders. Before making a strategic decision, for example, say, launching a new product. For example, say, extending a business activities into another market. Go globally. You are making a strategy to cater the global market. Will be a strategic decision you are taking. So, in making such strategic decisions, You should, uh, these alternatives will affect various stakeholder groups and what seems it first to be the best decision because it appears to be the most profitable may actually result in the worst set of consequences to the corporation sometimes, right? Sometimes will be most profitable, but may actually result some uh, negative results, right? So then, when may when you are making uh, strategic decisions, you have to look at social responsible, social responsible, socially responsible activities as well. Understood what I am saying? Otherwise, you will face, even though they are profitable, you have to have, you have to face some waste, worse circumstances. You have to face some worse circumstances if you do not engage in social, if you look at the social aspect of this decision. Economically, it will be highly viable, but actually you will get, face most of the worst circumstances. If you do not, if you forget about social aspect of that decision, if you do not look at the social aspect of that decision, you have to face so many negative circumstances, even though it is economically viable. That is what I am going to say. understood and I want to cover this part also but the problem is time ethical behavior
right we will uh, i will discuss uh, this topic as well uh, when i am covering the strategic management process before starting the management process strategic management process i will uh, discuss the ethical the importance of ethical behavior right so this uh, social responsibility and ethical behavior go together right so uh, when you are making a strategic decision you have to consider the social aspect and ethical aspect right thank you anything you want to talk with me anything you want to add as your ideas